Welcome back to the latest edition of Fighting Talk Wales, Wales' only boxing talk show. Um, just a quick thanks to our sponsor, Demon Shields. See the logo in the front there. Wales' leading manufacturer in all your gum shield needs for combat sports, rugby, football, etc. Get in contact with them. They're on Facebook, they're on Twitter. Um, on the last show, we, we sort of signed off saying we had some big news regarding a couple of upcoming fights. Um, unfortunately, um, well, one of the fights we've got to mention was Chris Jenkins versus Mitch Buckler, and a fight I know we were both really excited about. Unfortunately, that, that fight was, was sort of announced unofficially, and then it, it fell through through lack of a venue in Swansea, which is very disappointing because that's an excellent mm. matchup between two really class boxers. And um, also, it was a, an eliminator for the British title, which is a, a massive step for both guys as well. Mm. Would have been a great fight. Uh, obviously, really disappointed for Chris and Mitch, obviously. But uh, you know, Chris has been out of action now for what, seven, seven months, something like that, and uh, he was looking forward to getting back in there. But it's not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I was down <clears throat> Tony Boggs' gym the other day down St Joe's, and I got the impression they were hoping it would be rescheduled at some point. Um, I think a few people mentioned perhaps the the 16th of. July show in Cardiff, but apparently that's not going to happen then no. on that date. I mean, it's probably a big enough fight to be a headline by yourself, really. Um, but it's, it's really disappointing for Mitch and really disappointing for Chris and just for everyone involved, really, because it would have been a, an excellent fight for, for Welsh boxing. Yeah, and uh, I think they booked two weeks into their training camp as well, so you know, they've both put in the, the hard work and then to be told is off, you know, really disappointing. Yeah, because it was both these guys. No, I think they enjoy fighting. They need to get out there. And like I said, Chris hasn't boxed for a while. Um, Mitch has been a little bit, little bit more active. We had the fight in the, the Cardiff show, but it wasn't a big fight. Mm. Um, hope, so hopefully they'll get rescheduled sometime in the near future. Um, another fight that was um, in the process to be made was Nathan Cleverley against Andre Ward out in America towards the end of July. Um, that fight's not happening either now, apparently, due to Ward's team making too many demands. So what I understand is that Nathan might be fighting Jürgen Bremer um, in 17th September in Germany, which is a, a massive opportunity for Nathan. Um, it's a little bit of a surprise because the WBA did say that Nathan would have to have at least one win before he had a shot at the their champion, Bremer, mm. who's their <clears> normal <throat> champion, not their super champion. Um, but it's, it's a massive opportunity for Nathan if it does happen. Yeah, and a good fight on one Nathan can win. Yeah. I suppose that's the difference. I mean, I think Nathan against War uh, against Andre Ward that'd be a very difficult fight for Nathan because I think yeah. style-wise, you no know, Nathan be made for Andre Ward really. Yeah. Whereas Bremer is, is definitely a winnable fight for Nathan Cleverly. Yeah, definitely. I think he'll come away with a win with that one. Yeah, and he's going to obviously bigger and better things. Then. Um, there's not that many Welsh boxers in action over, over the next sort of month or so. The next big show is the 16th of July, um, but. One Welsh boxer who has been in action. I don't think we mentioned in the last show. Is Harry Miles? He, he boxed down in on the Hay undercard, yeah. and he put in, put in a good, pretty good performance by all accounts. Yeah, from from what I've heard, um, Harry won the first and the second round. Uh, third round was close, and so was the fourth round. Uh, so apparently, he should have had you know at least a draw, and it wasn't just his team saying that you know. Crowd was uh, thinking it, so you know that's a good performance by Ari because he was in against you know a top prospect Nick Webb. Uh, he's been bombing them all out, and uh, apparently Ari caught him some big shots as well and uh, shook him up. So yeah, you know it's, it's a good performance by Ari. Yeah, and let's hope this this performance sort of inspires Ari to perhaps be a little bit more dedicated in the gym. And now, now he's he obviously got the talent. Maybe it's just a ca case of dedicating himself and hopefully bigger fights will come yeah I, well like you know i caught up with Ari on the weekend and uh, he's just got a different uh, you know mindset now he's like more positive and he's you know he's, he's on the game now i'd say and that there has been rumors of a possible fight between harry and dorian darch for the the welsh heavyweight title mm -hmm. so that'd be certainly an interesting fight there's lots of different 23rd of july yeah there's lots of different sort of uh Le different sort of tangibles in a fight for who would not be a real good uh, contest thing. Mm. So we'll, uh, we'll cut to the interview with John and Harry Miles. It was out uh, about two weeks ago against uh, Nick Webb. 
Talk yeah. to us about the fight. Um, yeah, um, you know, we got the fight, I think it was two weeks notice we had. You know, I'd been in the gym anyway, training. You know, not hard, but training, taking over. Yeah, we got our fight then, two weeks notice, you know, put a bit of training in. Um, he was supposed to be some kind of, you know, beast. Five fights, five knockouts. Um, we got told that 14 people were offered the fight around the world. 40 people pulled out, didn't want to know. And they said, oh, we, we know we'll take our fight, Harry Miles. And um, yeah, we took a fight, um, you know, because I've been, been in with better people than him, I think. So we took, you know, we went to the fight, um, you know, boxed the first round. Um, you know, he was slow, so, and I was, count, I was counting on him with the left hand all day, you know, hitting him all day with it in the first round, and I just, from round two, didn't, didn't use my jab, just waiting for him to, just waiting to counter with the left hand, you know, loading up on it. You now it worked for the first two rounds, and then, you know, out of steam, and I was, you know, I was loading up so much. Um, my back went in the, in the end, I think it was the end of the second round when he was um, trying to chuck me over the ropes. Um, you know, at least I got, at least I should have got was a draw, I think. You know, the score was a bit, you know, ridiculous, but, you know, you've got to go beat these prospects, you've got to knock them out to win, so. Your first uh, heavyweight contest, short notice as well, was you happy with your own performance? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, no, if, if, if I boxed him more, I, I, I would have won quite easily, I think. You know, if I stuck to a game plan, which I didn't, I just thought I could bar him out. Um, no, um, I hit him many times in that fight, in that four rounder. Um, if I was fitter, I probably would have took him out. But, you know, he hit me. No, I was hit a couple of times as well. Um, you know, I said, every box in the court in the gym. Mm. You know, it could be lights out. He's known to be a big puncher, eh? How, how, how hard does he actually hit? Yeah, and, um, no, I've, I've been hit by all the cruiserweights. You know, I've been, you know, I've spotted like some hard work. You know, and, you know, he hit a lot harder than that. Uh, Nick Webber, I think it's like, you know, three and a half stone difference. Um, but he's, you know, he's, he's, he's a lot slower than, than obviously Mark Luck, you know. Um, and he doesn't hurt as much when, it, when it's slow punches. Like most of these heavyweights, you know, they, they're slow. Wait, you see it and you see it coming, you know, and get, get, and get ready for the impact. Mm. Do you think you'll stick at the heavyweight now, are you? Oh, definitely. I know, I've got no intentions of uh, going to weight unless a big fight comes up. Well, there was talks you were. Uh, Having a uh, fight for this Welsh title, what's happening with Anna? Um, we don't know. Um, I spotted Dorian Daz, well, his old trainer, um, Pebbles. You know, he spotted Dorian Darch and said, you know, he wants to fight. I won the fight, but this is a thing with money. I think um, Dorian sells a lot of tickets, doesn't he? Um, I don't really. Uh, no one wants to see me fight for some reason. <laughs> 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 I must be uh, disliked by the, by the local public, I think. Um, but um, yeah, if 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 it can give us some kind of you know deal, you know, you no, know, I don't think we want to take a deal. Do you know I mean mm -hmm. they put a bit of money up front? You know, the fucking art man. Do you know what I mean it's 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 our bit. No, Donny wants it. I want it. So um, we're probably the best two wait every in Wales. So when you go to Daz and Morgan, you know, um, these are long, you've had injury problems and that, and he's easily just coming back now a few years out, so, you know, me and Dorian, we've got to in Wales, so let's have it. A good interview there by John, um, it's good to see him back doing the interviews like he used to do a couple of years ago, John. Yeah, it's, it's nice to be back out and uh, I enjoyed it. Um, another Welsh boxer who's, who's in action, 25th of June, is uh, Tom Dorian from North Wales. He sort of gets a bit overlooked being up there in North Wales. Um, but he's got in a massive fight against Chris Eubank Jr. on the, uh, the Anthony Joshua undercard. Um, I think Tom Dorian has, has come out this week and said that he's going to test Eubank's chin mm. in this fight. I mean, Dorian's only got seven KOs and uh, out of his 17 wins. Um, how do you see that fight going, John? Oof, I don't know. I, obviously, I think uh, Eubanks will win the fight, but uh, uh, Tom Dorian, he's, he's an exciting fighter. And, uh, you know, I know he's only got seven KOs, but he can bang. Mm. Um, you know, he goes to win, as you know, he unbeaten record. Uh, in his last fight, he, he got put down, you know, got back up, really gutsy performance. And, uh, you know, he'll be there, like you said, and he will be there to test Eubanks' chin. 
Yeah, it's, it's, I think Eubank, because because of what happened to Nick Blackwell in the last fight, sort of oh, oh, sort of uh, his, his performance got forgotten a little bit. Eubank, I think, is a really ec- excellent fighter. So Dorian's going to be on top of his game to uh, to win this one. <laughs> Most definitely. Um, there's a few big shows taking place in Wales over the next couple of months. Um, obviously, the big show on the 16th in Cardiff. Um, there's a show in Merthyr on the 23rd as well, I believe. Um, so we, we'll get to see all the, the, the local Welsh talent over the next month or so, over, over the fans support these shows, and that, that'll basically mean, mean the shows will continue and give the Welsh boxers an opportunity to showcase their skill in the, in the local area. Um, one of the fighters in action is going to be uh, Alex Hughes. I know he's, well, we both really excited about Alex, one of the mm. best talents. Um, in, in probably anywhere in British boxing, actually. Yeah. And um, t- talking to boys who sparred him, he, he apparently is so difficult to look good against in sparring. Mm. Um, I've been down there and watched him a few times, really, really impressed. In fact, you know, I pick him as my number one prospect to go, to go all the way in, in Britain, you know, a British level. Um, seven and oh, really active in 2015. I think he had five fights. Um, he haven't boxed this year, but he's been having some quality sparring with the likes of George Groves. Um, Spike, you know, he's traveled over to Ireland to with Spike for his fight with Eubanks. So even though he haven't been actively fighting, you know, he's been having some quality sparring. Mm. I did actually hear, I don't know, say truth to it, that when he was sp- sparring Spike or Sullivan, he was actually. A boxing spike to the point they were sort of telling Alex, "Look, uh, take the afternoon off. You're not needed this afternoon." Mm. I don't know how much truth to that. You hear a lot of stories about sparring and whatever, but um, I wouldn't be surprised. Mm. You know, he's, I watched him yesterday on the pads with Brett, and uh, he's sharp, really sharp. And uh, I haven't seen anybody looking that good on the pads since watching Cleverly back in the day with Alan on the pads. You know, he was just really impressive. The sounds when he's hitting the pads, he's looking really sharp. And uh, as you mentioned, John caught up with Alex uh, a couple of days ago, so let's uh, go to that interview. 2015 now, uh, good, good year for you, Fifth, uh, f- five fights. Yeah, um, very busy uh, second half mainly last year, I think I had you know, five fights from May to December, so very, very busy last year. And good year, you know, progressive, learning stuff from different fights, so um, yeah, good year overall, good year, yeah. A couple of good uh, fights, uh, taking the distance once or twice. Yeah. Um, what do you learn, learn from them fights, huh? Um, mainly the, the, main, the Wayne Reed fight. Wayne Reed, yeah, the uh, five win with uh, yeah, that was, Tommy um, Langford, wasn't it? That's right, yeah. Give Tommy Langford a good go in, well, not a good go in, but... but uh, that, I think that was my main learning fight, it was my fifth fight. And uh, like I said, as an amateur, I never stopped anyone. Turn pro, my first four was stop three. So, you know, I think I started to get a bit carried away with letting my power shots go and uh, first three rounds against Wayne Reed, just loading up with everything and um, we caught up with me end from four on and I was uh, not saying hanging on, I mean I still won the fight comfortable but uh, I was struggling to catch my breath a bit but um, no massive learning experience for me and that's what I needed after my fifth fight, you know. Yeah, and uh, 2016, we haven't seen him yet in the ring. But you've got a big fight coming up, tell us more on that. Um, July 16th, Cardiff, um, massive bill, you know. My stable mate Liam Williams on it, fighting um, them defeated Gary Kokora. Got Rigondo's on it, um, Tommy Langford, Bradley Skeet, Dale Evers on it, you know, Jay Harris, massive bill, so really looking forward to it. If anyone needs tickets, obviously, you can get in touch with myself, Brett. Obviously, Liam got tickets as well, so yeah, yeah. brilliant. Uh, what's been the reason now for uh, the inactivity uh, this year so um, far? You know, a, bit, a bit of bad luck, I was supposed to fight in April. A um, few days before things fell through. But, um, you know, obviously it's always frustrating being inactive. But um, I've been lucky enough to have fantastic sparring with the likes of George Groves, who've uh, invited me up for this camp. This upcoming fight against Martin Murray. And, uh, so I've always been in shape, you know, they could have asked me just say three weeks ago, look, the slot come up on this build, you want to step in on a weekend and I, I was ready, I'm all, I've always been ready it's just so I'm going into this fight with um, phenomenal confidence and that mm. so I really really can't wait to get in there now. Yeah, sparring wise you've been on some quality sparring, you know over an island with uh, Spike. 
exactly, yeah, um, over in Ireland was by Christmas time. I was up in Scotland then with David Brophy just after Christmas and uh, you know this basically first half of the year. I've been doing all my sparring with um, you know one of the best super middleweights on the planet, George Grove, so I couldn't ask for anything better. So obviously it's frustrating being inactive, but uh, I've made up for it with the likes of the work I've been having, so it's not all bad, it's not all bad. Yeah. And the opponent, have you got an opponent for, for the six Yeah, um, Alistair Warren's been named, so you know, he looks, he had, he had a good win in his last fight, he beat uh, Miles Cash, who I remember Miles in Amateurs, and you know, he's nice and, you know, nice and sharp and stuff, so, you know, he, he's game, he comes and has a go, so if, I, if I'm not on my A game, it could be an upset, so um, I know i got to come and, uh, and really bring it, and that's what I want to do in front of my own fans. How many rounds will have you about? My first eight rounder, so, um, as I said, really looking for that, like I said, I know I will fight the same before every fight, but, Basically, I've had six months training camp for this. I am being out of the gym, and I re I feel, like I said, I feel like I go this weekend. So um, I'm more than ready for eight rounds. I'm really, really looking forward to putting a show on Double Cardiff. Yeah, and uh, you know, not actually looking past the guy, but you know, what what's next then after that? I was supposed to plan for this year. Well, hopefully now this will be my my eighth fight. We get what hopefully we get one more in there, but by the end of the year we're looking at some kind of title shot for my tenth fight. That's. Yeah. That, that is the plan anyway, so by the end of the year, I'll be looking to have um, some sort of title wrap around my waist, definitely, yeah. And uh, this fight can up, Al, if people want to get in touch with you for the tickets, how can they do so? Uh, you know, I'm on Facebook, Alex Hills, Twitter, Al, at Alex Hills 38 also, um, you know, I, I, a lot, the man who does all my ticket sales for me, basically, I can't thank enough, is Brett Parry, the owner of Marty Boxing Club, in my, in my dad, and, uh, Obviously, my dad might go as well, so if anyone needs tickets, um, you know where to get from. And um, like I said, I think Liam said he's done 400 tickets already, so they're flying yeah. out. You know what I mean? So um, if we need them, get them ASAP. It's been another massive night, you know, for, exactly, for Welsh yeah. boxing, isn't it? I think, you know, all of us down the gym, we're all, we're all on it, so we're all buzzing, absolutely buzzing. And, uh, we're all pushing each other hard as well because we know what's coming up and uh, just just great atmosphere to be around the minute, John. Yeah. Oh, can't wait, really can't wait. And uh, before we go, Al, is there any sponsors or anything you want to give a shout uh, out to? Yeah, you know, the gym where we train Athie King, um, you know, that's the supplements thing, uh, UFIT, UFIT Cardiff and uh, a company down to Lanchester, Pont de um UFIT, no, UFIT, um, CMS team with, they um, supply me with a lot of kit and stuff as well, so Big thanks to all them as well, yeah. Another good interview by John there, and um, we look forward to seeing Alex in action again in the near future. Um, on the show, Fight to Talk Wales, we try and talk exclusively about Welsh boxing. Um, but a, a recent ruling was made by AIBA, the, inter the amateur governing body, that affects, I think, all of boxing, which is the ruling that allows professionals to box in the Olympic Games if they qualify. Um, it's been a very controversial ruling, which I don't think many people seem very happy about it. Um, John, as, as an amateur boxing coach yourself, how, how do you feel about this ruling that allows pros to sort of take the spot, in my eyes, of, a, of a, an amateur who's mm. trained hard to get in the Olympics? It's a bit unfair, and I don't really understand why a professional would want to go and fight in the, in the Olympics. You know, they've, they've obviously got an advantage of experience and stuff, and they've been there, done it, and had their opportunity coming, coming through the first time. And, uh, you know, just let the amateurs have their, you know, they've been in the spotlight. And is there a sort of, um, is there any sort of health risk, do you think? I mean, because the top, the top level amateurs are really in their own right, they're sort of, they're world class fighters in themselves. As much as the pros are world class in in, in the pro game, mm. with the regards to making weight, and you know they've, they've got to make that weight every day, whereas uh, at the moment they've just got to make that weight the day before, and then they pile the weight on, so it could be dangerous that way. But um, you know, I, I would like to see if it did happen. You know, like one of the amateurs knocking out one of the big names of the pros who want to have a crack at it. But mm. uh, yeah, I think I think one one of the only pros is actually. Said that he'd uh, be interested. Well, actually, two is. I think Amir Khan has mentioned he might be interested in boxing for Pakistan. Um, and of course, Amir's had his shot in the Olympics. Yeah. And I think Chris Eubank Jr. 
mentioned it, or Chris Young Senior might have mentioned it on Junior's behalf, but I think that was quickly blown out of the water by the by the GB boxing. But um, you know, I, I just think it's a cr- crazy ruling. Mm. Yeah, I don't think it's any safety issue. I just think it's um, amateurs. The, the pinnacle of amateur boxing is the Olympic Games, and the pinnacle of professional boxing is a, a world title, mm. whether it be WBA, WBC, etc. And that just takes something away from the amateur boxing. I think all the pros should stick together and say, look, we're not going to uh, en- enter the competition. Mm. Yeah. Um, I was down in St. Joe's Newport uh, recently, and I had a chance to speak to Tony Borg about this issue, and also Andrew Selby, who, of course, is now the British flyweight champion, but also one of British boxing's most successful amateur boxers who has boxed in the big games. Countless amateurs and professionals from grassroots right through to world class level. Um, what's your opinion on the recent rule change that allows professional boxers to box in the Olympic Games? I think it's a ridiculous situation. Um, I think it'd be ridiculous if they said they were going to do it at the next Olympics, but to say they're going to do it now at these Olympics is just ridiculous. Some of these top amateurs are boxing at world class level. Um, month in, month out, all around the world, different tournaments. Um, and they're boxing over three rounds at that you know, high intensity. Um, a pro boxer, a decent, a good pro boxer, um, if he's good enough to um, achieve Olympic level, um, he's not going to compare with those boys over three rounds. And also he's going to maintain that weight over five, six, seven, eight day period. You know, he could box on a Monday and box again on a Wednesday. They can't, the pros can't hold that weight. They box in, um, it's, it's just a different game altogether. It's the same sport, but it's a different game, different levels. Amateur boxing is for the Olympics, not the pros. And does the Olympics as well give amateur boxers something to aim for? Well, yeah, it's something they've aimed for all their life. You know, they go into the gyms, young kids, they go through from schoolboy, youth, senior level. Um, hopefully they can get um, the number one in their country, in the GB team go to all these tournaments and eventually qualify for the Olympics. It's a lot harder now than it was in the 80s. They've got to qualify at these tournaments. Uh, these boys who've done that now, uh, Joe Cordini, for example, I'm speaking to Joe from our gym, uh, for somebody to come from the pro game and jump in, it's, it's just wrong, it's wrong. And do, do you feel there's a safety issue as well in regards um, to different levels between the pros and amateurs, or is that something which... To be honest, no. I've heard, I've heard that um, statement from a few, no, number, number of people, but I don't think that would be a safety issue. Um, the, box, the amateur boxers are boxing over three rounds at a real high level. You know, when they go into some of these tournaments, you're boxing a Russian, and you're boxing a German, a Pole, a Kazakhstan. You're boxing top quality fighters, you know, over three, might have three different opponents in the same week. You know, some of the pros couldn't do that, to be honest with you. So I don't think there'd be an issue there over three rounds. Um, some of the pros, uh, if there's a safety issue, is some of the pros trying to make that weight continuously over a six, seven day period. They're not used to doing that. Uh, speak to me now is former Olympian and current British flyweight champion, Andrew Selby. Andrew, um, recently there's been um, a rule change that allows professionals to box in the Olympics. Yeah. As a former Olympian yourself and a, and a now a professional champion, what do you think of this rule change? To be honest, I don't think it's very good at all. If they asked me to go in the Olympics, I would say no. Um, because like a seasoned pro, it, it takes them three or four rounds to warm up, like the likes of Canelo or anyone. Um, Mia Khan might do well because he's fast, fast starter in Manny Pacquiao, all the rest. I can't see him doing very well. All the amateurs would just be too fast for him over three rounds. Do you think as well that it would take away um, take away the reason so many amateurs stay amateur? Yeah, it, c- it can like, I think it can ruin a professional's career or it can gain an amateur's because if an amateur beats a top professional and then a promoter's going to want to sign him. But I think it should just stay the way it is. Um, no one's complained before, so there's no reason complaining now. Do you feel more amateur boxers would turn professional early if this rule change means a lot of pros enter the Olympics? Um, well, every, every amateur wants to go to the Olympic Games, so that's their main, that's their main target, get a medal in the Olympic Games and then turn professional. They say, they say turn professional at least 21 years of age, so get the experience in the amateur game, because most of the amateurs are better than professionals over three rounds. 
get that experience going to professional games saying if you're fit enough you'll find it easy and do you think there's it would be dangerous for professionals or amateurs to be mixing in the same ring yeah definitely because like you've got experienced pros who can bang or you could either get the fast amateurs who can just outbox a professional and like i said end his career uh, some interesting points there made by by tony and andrew john yeah i think that pretty much sums it up you know like Andrew said, really, you know, if it's if, and Tony said, if it's not broke, don't try and fix it. Like nobody's complaining or nobody's calling for for the pros to enter the competition. Mm. So I don't know, don't know why they're going about doing it. Yeah, the, the only reason I can think, like like Tony said, is just greed. They want, they want the big names to get the big sponsorship. Yeah, but that's, the, that's the only reason I can think, because nobody has asked for it. The amateurs haven't asked for it, and the pros haven't asked for it. So um, another big fight that took place last week involving a Welsh boxer was Enzo Macronelli um, fighting for the European title in the York Hall in London unfortunately as I'm sure we all know Enzo lost that fight in the first round and has uh, subsequently announced his retirement um, probably didn't go out the way he wanted to but w- what a great career and what a, a great servant to Welsh and British boxing yeah yeah like I said great servant um Love absolutely love watching Enzo Macanelli because simply he is vulnerable you know, and you know a little bit chinny as they say. But um, it's a shame that he's going to retire because you know he's not retiring because of his ability to box. I mean he's still got great boxing ability, but it's just because the punch resistance seems mm. to have gone, and for that reason uh, he's going to retire. Yeah, he's, he's had quite a few heavy knockouts there, hasn't he? Mm. But but. but the thing I love about Enzo is not just his fighting style it's just I see Enzo I've seen him on different amateur shows you as well probably and he's got so much time for all the fans just just a line of kids all lined up with bits of paper yeah. and Enzo's there signing every every single piece of paper for them yeah. which is a great example to, to pros how to interact with the fans and for yeah. Enzo it's just, just he's not acting that way he's just, that's just the way he is mm. and somebody made a comment on Twitter the other day, you know, I hope you're sorted financially and he said uh, you know I haven't been doing this lately for the for the money, it's just been for the love of the sport. Yeah. And, you know, he clearly does love it. Yeah, it's strange how you get certain boxers who sort of, they let down by their lack of dedication. They've got all the skill, but let, you've got, you've got Enzo, who's got so much determination and so much, he just loves boxing. But unfortunately, just, he's just sort of, you know, he's getting, you think he's about 35 now as well, so. Mm. But um, it's a shame, and just, we wish Enzo all the best in his retirement. I'm sure he'll uh, be involved in boxing. Mm. I know he's involved in amateur boxing now, but I'm sure I won't be surprised if he ends up on Box Nation or or even Sky or somebody. So and he was he was on a roll as well, wasn't he? And uh, he was looking like uh, big fights were going to be coming if he'd yeah. uh, come through this. So yeah, it's a shame. Get it? Yeah, but all, all the best, Enzo. Um, so about covers it all, John. Um, obviously, you've got a couple of big shows got Wales, as we mentioned. Hopefully, we'll we'll do another show close to the dates with interviews with uh, Liam Williams and some of the other boxers on, on, the, on those cards. Um, just want to say once again, thanks to our sponsor, Demon Shields. You see their logo in the front on Twitter, on Facebook for all your gum shield needs. Um, and we'll catch you on the next Fighting Talk Wales. <laughs>